Never take nothing for granted. So it can all be taken away yeah. from you. Yeah. yeah. I did some things that I do not regret. 100. Bro, bread with niggas that I don't respect. Real I'm just shit. thinking the bait, know how to flip a check. My shorty don't even smoke, but I swear she rolled the best. Yeah. Police killing every day. I swear to God, I'm just trying to stay out the way. Yeah. And we are back. Okay, cool. We are here with our man, guest of the hour, Sherm. Action. That's right. Yeah, man. We appreciate it, man. And uh, y'all welcome to Try Hip Hop Podcast once again. Oh, shit. You just boo me? Nah, I was trying to get the... I thought you I had to... Nah, son. I was trying to do the uh, clap. I was trying to do the clap. You're fine. Oh, there we You're go. There we go. There it is. That's what I was trying to do. Man, I'm fucking up. All Good right, job. <laughs> we'll let it slide this time. Damn. All right, we so yeah, this is uh, again. This is Try It Hip Hop Podcast. This is episode one fifty four, uh, and we're doing part two. We got a special guest in the house, my man Germ Hatcher. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, what's up, everybody? Of course, um, uh, I'm a local artist out of North Carolina. Um, you can find me on any major platform. That's videos, music. Uh, I'm on all social media. Uh, Germ Hatcher on everything. Um. I got a couple projects out uh, streaming on all platforms, and I got something new that I'm working on right now. Wow. I haven't really picked a release date uh, okay. for the project. In all honesty, it's finished, but it ain't finished. Because I mean, every yeah, time I hear songs you got on it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's really going to be a shorter project. I'm going to do like six songs. Okay, okay. Kind of like an EP. Yeah, but well, every time I'm I... like Kanye, yeah. 2017. <laughs> <laughs> every time I go to the studio and hear a beat, I want to add something right. to it, so it's hard to, it's hard yeah. to cut it off. I understand that. Hey, man, that's good. That's, man, that means you got a love for music, so yeah. that's that's always a good thing, man. Um, so I'll start out with this. So how long have you been uh, rapping? Um, I've been rapping over 10 years. Uh, okay. When I was, I started messing with him when I was about 18, okay. 17, 18. Uh, I really wasn't taking it serious back then. You know, I was too busy running the streets. Um, but a friend of mine had actually got me in the studio, got me focused. You know what I mean? I started taking it a little serious when I was probably about 2021. 20, okay, okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. You know, I used to do a little rhymes back in the day, but, yeah. you know, we ain't gonna, I ain't going to date myself, <laughs> you know, so y'all don't even know. For all y'all know, I'm 20-something. That's yeah. all y'all need to know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, we are really, uh, you know, glad to have you because we like to put local artists in front of our audience and let everybody see that, you know, that's what we're all about, hip-hop as a culture. Um, so what kind of questions do you have, Howie? Well, I was going to ask you, you were talking about the album and stuff, uh, and you talking about adding on, and, you know, what what is your process? If you want to, if you're making an album, what, what's your, um, what's the process of John Hatch? I take, I take, like, I probably take about two months. Okay. I'm just picking out beats. Because um, I'm, I'm real picky, uh, you should be, yeah. When it comes to music, like, I, I can't just, like, if I can, I can go in the studio, I can make songs all day. Yeah. Right. But when I drop a project, I like to try to have, like, some type of content, some type of story. I want it to kind of go together and for them to actually, when they hit a song, to visualize what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? So, my music may come a little different, but I was raised in an era where we listened to Jeezy and Gotti. Right, yeah. right. So, you know. Speaking of which, so... I'm sure you watched that versus. Yeah. What did you take from that? Uh, with the, the Gigi and Gotti thing. The Gigi and, uh, uh, Gigi and Gucci. Gucci. Yeah, with Gucci. Damn, uh, my my fault. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> yeah, it was like, well, <laughs> this is this is this is my personal opinion because that was one of the biggest beefs yeah. of hip hop. Yeah. 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 But you got to look at you got to be a strategic thinker when you going like it was a versus battle. It wasn't like right. a, a setup beef battle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So. When they went into it, Jeezy went in the mindset of a businessman. Right. Yeah. He gonna please the crowd with hits. Gucci went in still thinking about the beef. Yeah. He wanna bring all his beef tracks. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm not just taking that from Gucci. I'm a Gucci fan. You yeah. know what I mean? But if he would have played more of his uh commercial songs, right. yeah. I right. think he would have won. You know yeah, I agree. I think uh, I mean the culture really won because I mean if yeah, they was able to come together. Yeah, the I'm end, glad to see. Them. If you look at it, artist to artist, I think like you said, Jeezy probably took it on, took it away because I mean his mind was in a different place. You know, what I mean yeah. Gucci was just on the, you know, I'm gonna make you look bad. You know, coming right. out with the bars, and I was like, okay, where is this coming from? 
But, uh, you know, it is what it is, man. You know, I'm, I'm glad they got through it, though. I was a little worried there for a minute because I could feel that tension. <laughs> I was like, okay, are they about to pull out some stuff right now? You know. I thought it was going to have uh, another retake again. <laughs> <laughs> right, like the camera going to cut a hole. Y'all, we'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> y'all cut the tape. <laughs> but, but um, know. now you were talking, and you said you, uh, Jeezy and Gotti. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I do know my hip hop and yeah. stuff. It's just, you know, certain. But anyway, um, who who are who's your top five? Who's your I mean, since you Ooh, know, uh, influences. Yeah, we always got to. All right, that so one. are we talking like uh, the older generation or like in general? It can be yeah. your top five. Yeah, um, whoever you yeah, can, whoever yeah. you want. Whether it's from old or new, it don't even matter. Was, you know, dead or alive, as they say. Uh, that's a tough one. If I had to pick a top five. Right now, um, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with Gotti only because that is my favorite artist. You know what okay. I'm saying? I, like I, I love his blueprint. Okay. How he putting he putting his city on. He putting artists from his city on. You know what I mean? He a smart businessman outside of being a hustler that made it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and he's still doing it for his age. You know what I mean? He's still relevant. He's still dropping music. They still buying. It, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm a little baby fan. Okay, he's okay. real lyrical. Um, I'm a money bag fan. You know, money bag talk that shit. Okay. Uh, I'm a I'm a real big dirt fan. You know. What okay. Mean? Okay. In all honesty, that's uh, that's probably who I listen to the most. Okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Um, how many would say about a four? Yeah, it's four. Ooh, ooh. Uh, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. <laughs> um, I don't know. I probably uh. Oh, that's a tough one. Who's gonna be my last pick? I might, I might have to give it to another old school cat or something. I might have to go ahead and um. I'm gonna leave that one open for Tupac and Biggie because I listen okay. to a lot of okay. old stuff too. Yeah. You know what I'm, saying? I'm not gonna yeah. pick one or the other because everybody right. wanna compare them. I'm gonna right. just say they both <laughs> great and I'm gonna put them in there together. That's what's up, man. I mean, um, speaking of Biggie, there's a new Biggie documentary coming out on um, I Netflix. Think it's Netflix. Yeah. So that's gonna be coming soon. Um, I, I'm, you know, they've done a few things on Biggie, like movies and stuff, documentaries, but this would be um some unreleased footage and things like that more about his backstory things that people probably don't know so i'm kind of excited to see it you know what i mean because i mean i was raised up in that era you know what i mean uh so the 90s and the early 2000s to me were like some of my favorite parts of hip-hop you know what i mean so um you know i'm definitely excited it's called uh i got a story to tell yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so you gonna check it out I am gonna check it out. <laughs> Damn, what you, you gonna look at? Nah, I don't fall asleep. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just asking. Nah, you know, but uh, I think it's gonna be good, man. Um, I'm just hoping they asked his uh his mother more of the story than yeah. they did uh yeah. uh Diddy. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Diddy gonna tell him like, yeah, well, you know, you know, he's gonna be like, man, I, t- I told him we don't stop. Yeah, you know, you know what kept I mean? going. And Diddy, I mean, he's cool, but he he is from behind this. He's the one that put it together, him and somebody else. So, you know, it's it's, it's hard to say what it's going to be like. But based on the, the commercials they're doing for it, it seems decent. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, See, I like this weird philosophy. Like, for example, you ask one of my homeboys about me. Mm-hmm. He's going to tell you stuff, probably it, more illegal stuff than good stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if you go ask, like, your mother, your father, like, they're going to tell you who you really are. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd rather yeah. let his mother tell the story than ask his friends and stuff because the story ain't never Actually. really what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, because she birthed him. Yeah, she, she knows. She can talk yeah. about him. Yeah, that's her son. Yeah. I agree with that. That would be dope if they got I know she's going to be in it, but, I'm, you know, it's how much is going to be uh, left yeah. up to question. But I think it's going to be a good documentary overall, though. Uh, let's, let, I'm asking my man another question. Sure. Um, so, who have you worked with, like, and who do you want to work with in North Carolina or just anywhere? Um, I've worked with a lot of artists out of my area, uh, a whole lot, a lot of Charlotte artists, okay. um, Greensboro, I mean, anywhere in the triad, like, you know what I mean? I know a lot of people, we work with a lot of artists. Uh, I'm, to, I'm just to the point now, and I don't, I don't want to take nothing, I don't want nobody to take it the wrong way. It's not that... I don't want features. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh 
I'm just really trying to concentrate on myself. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Make, make sure, sure that, that you I'm heard. Yeah, yeah that, I understand that. I agree. Yes, I agree. make sure that you shine. You know, I mean, <laughs> speaking of features, so DMX is coming out with a new album. Yeah, we we were talking about this. He's got like a lot of features on him. Mm-hmm. And um, why you think so? Well, this is the thing. <laughs> this is the thing. When he, it's funny that you were talking. We were talking about features and stuff. When he first came, when we first started getting noticed, yeah, you know, he was on a lot of features. Yeah. You know, money, power, respect. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we got to see, you know, that dark and you know, dark and hell is hot. You know, finally, we got to see him on the project by himself. If that's what you hoping to do, as far as, I'm not necessarily saying imitate DMX, but as far as like that's you know what that statement that you just said, you want to be able to shine and cut like, oh, that's germ right there. That's the germ. You know what I'm saying? I want, I want to know. I, I don't need nobody on the track. With yeah, you know what yeah, mean? I agree. But I don't mind having somebody on the track yeah. at the same time. Yeah, and I mean, I think that because of DMX's catalog, he's already done so much, so he can do an album with a bunch of features. He has nothing to really prove, you know, and, and right now, and you know, for me, I think he's more so just like, you know, I just want to put on a lot of people who uh, are good in the industry and just have a fun, fun album, you know what I mean? I got like, like, like say, say I come into the game right now, I'm 32, all right? Mm-hmm. I go double platinum. 20 years later, you know, I ain't put out a hit in 10 years or something. Right. A lot of people probably ain't really paying me that much attention for music. Right. So what right. I do, I go grab a bunch of features from artists that's popping. Yeah. So when my project drop, everybody gonna look for it. Right. Know, to get, to get me back in the mix. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's what I think a lot of people do. Yeah. But so you're thinking that's what X is doing? I'm not. Yeah, that's how I look at it. Yeah. Not, you know, I ain't yeah. taking nothing from him. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. been out the game for a little minute. He's a father. He's been taking it easy. So I think. He using that to his advantage, like, all right, I'm gonna do some features with some hot artists, get some hot music, boom, it's gonna get me back right. And on his next project, watch him have less features. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's he can true. Work, his, work his features back down because now we're back listening to him. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah man. And uh, I think, you know, the younger generation does need to give uh, um, X, you know, a little more attention because, I mean, he's a good artist. I mean, yeah. and, uh, you know, understand where, you know, that side of the fence comes from. But yeah, I mean, um, but yeah, I'm definitely, I'm looking forward to that. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, um, so who, anybody specific in the industry right now that uh, kind of influenced you other than like Gotti? I know you said he's one that's your favorite, but anybody else that kind of influences you? Uh, um, say, I want to kind of, I like what they do, you know what I mean? Anybody that's, anybody that's rapping about something real and trying to deliver a real message. I, and, and when I say a real message, I mean a positive message. It don't matter if you grew up selling dope, right? Uh, shooting guns, you was in prison, none of that. If you actually trying to deliver a positive message to the youth, to tell them to try to avoid what you went through, right. like I can rock with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't listen to a lot of the young people that all they talk about is shooting each other and stuff like why yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah, look, I mean, look how the world is right now. So oh man, it's, you know what I mean? You gotta talk about doing something better. Regardless if you if you in the mix, you in the mix. Some people can't help that. That's just that's life. But you I know agree. what I mean? I'm yeah. not I'm not gonna encourage my kids and the young youth around me to go buy a gun and kill each other. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I mean, you got to put some kind of example out there. I mean, no matter what you say to kids, they pay more attention to your example than what you say. You know what I mean? They look at what you do more than what you say. So I definitely agree with that. Um, And, uh, you know, before I go too far, don't forget, y'all, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, Push all the buttons. We got YouTube. We got uh, Facebook. Facebook, We got Instagram going. So we appreciate all y'all checking us out. you know, our sound system might not be the same because a lot of our cameras are a little bit further away. So we're trying to speak up a little bit, but uh, we got to get some more. We got to get some mics up in here, man. You know, we got to get our mic game up. Yeah, we can get a mic yeah. game up. So, um, but y'all, thank y'all for checking us out. Once again, we are interviewing my man, Germ Hatcher. Yeah. He's a local artist from here at NC. And, uh, you know, we, we love doing that, man. Putting on for, this, for the Carolinas. You know what I mean? It's a lot of talent coming out of Carolinas, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, we, we have my man C. Pitt, uh, uh, we got my man Young Ron, you know what yep, I mean? Yep. Um, and uh, uh, what's my man? Um, 
Honcho. Honcho Truth. Honcho Truth. Truth. Yeah, yeah. Honcho. Honcho Truth. Yeah. You know, all the artists we met at the Rock the Mic tournament um, down in, uh, where did we go? That was down Stage in Stage Oh, there. speaking of which, so let's, let's, let me ask you this. So with Corona, you know, the coronavirus and stuff, mm -hmm. and I, it seemed like it's, it's definitely affect like the mainstream and yeah. all these other people. Um, how, has it affected you as far as like look like you're not able to do I mean I ain't gonna necessarily say shows, but I mean, how has that affected you as um, you know, as far as you getting your music and and actually how did it change like the type of music coming out? Because like right. you, you gotta look at it now, like, you know, this club hop and stuff, you yeah. know, back, you know, two thousand nineteen. I ain't gonna get you through no pain. Right. I'm just gonna be right. <laughs> so I mean I mean yeah. so how is that change how is that process? Um well like when the when the pandemic hit, in all honesty with the pandemic, I uh I got less shows. Like I was I was doing shows, you know what I'm saying, around mm. North Carolina. I got less shows. Uh since the pandemic I probably did like three little shows. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Which uh, you know, no major situ no major deal or nothing, but you know. Still, I like doing shows, uh, yeah. especially when they pay shows. That's always a plus, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when the shows slow down, for some reason, my features picked up. Okay. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Like, I did more features this year than I probably did almost my whole career. Yeah. You know wow. Like, That's guys started reaching out to me, like, because like, I, was, I was just doing so much social media yeah. sharing, you know what I mean, promoting it. And, like, I just, I like, I got a whole tape. That ain't even got I got a whole mixtape, I ain't even got a name for it. Wow. You know, wow. Like, I, just, I just got songs, so like, I just told me. Yeah, I just yeah, kept recording. Wow, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you started hitting me, they was like, they hit me on my snap and stuff, like, hey bro, like, I'm trying to jump on yeah, that track. That's work, man. And I'll be like, look, you shoot me this, you can jump on it. You know what I yeah. mean? So that's it really good, it worked out. That's you know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean, I think that's how life is, you know, one like they say, once one door kind of closes, another one opens up. So, you know. People probably noticing you from the shows and like, yo, I need to work with him, man. You know what I mean? Because from what I heard on your YouTube channel, it was pretty dope. You know what I mean? Y'all go out there and check out Germ Hatch's uh, YouTube channel. That's spelled J-E-R-M and then H-A-T-C-H-A. -H -A. Go check that out. It's dope, man. He got a few songs up there, you know, to give y'all a little taste of what he's, yeah. uh, what he's doing. So I really like that. And, um, you know, we definitely going to uh, promote some more of your stuff, you know, on our channel. So um, and shout out to T Lynn for real, man, for um, for for yeah, setting this up. Yeah, man, just make sure I hit the, yeah. hit the right button this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hit the boo, we're gonna have this shot. Yeah. You know what? Like, this concludes the episode. Right. <laughs> Oh, man. But yeah, we appreciate her for um, setting this up. Um, let's talk a little bit about this Meek Mill uh, situation with Six Nine. Oh yeah, uh, real quick. Um, did you happen to see the video of that? Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I mean, what what was your opinion on how that went down? That's that's like a double sided sword. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, for one, you you cannot beat up the police. Right. You know the police. <laughs> right. So by him by him even doing what he did to me, he just doing that for clout. Right. In my first opinion, Meek should have just kept on walking. He should have. You know what I mean? Because by you reacting, you giving him what he wants. Yeah, because you're you know the older person with the, you know, you're yeah. supposed to have yeah. that. And, you know. He going he gonna to eat off of that. Like, you you showing him all the attention, then you sharing the videos. Right. Oh, now he getting all the publicity that he wanted for free. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's the whole thing about it. Like, no one's really looking for his music like that. Uh, I mean. And, he just a troller now. You know what yeah. I mean? He just trolled. That's what he do. And that's what me and a friend you know, we kind of had a conversation about that. It's like, you know, especially like with with our platform, and I'm pretty sure you're the same way. Like, we want to be able to grow it, but be able to grow it with like, you know, have some legs intact, have people intact, like people that we know, like, okay, that's my man right here. Like, I know he, you know, he's supporting. Yeah. So, you know, with, with uh, 6 9 I think his whole thing is just like, as long as I get attention, it's right. good. And the thing of it is, it's like anybody want to see a car wreck, right. but they're not going to see if you're all right. They're going to drive on by. Right. After the, everything clear, the wreckage is done. It's like uh, like YouTube. Say you got a YouTube account and you make a viral video, you get 30, 40,000 streams. Like, sooner or later, you're going to start getting paid for it. Yeah. He got enough people following his page just to see the nonsense that he does to yeah. where he puts up something like that argument real, he gonna get he get paid off the streams. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he getting rich 
off by other people's stupidity. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? You yeah, got you true. have to block him out. Yeah. If not, he gonna. You know. Yeah. Because I mean that's all it is, and I mean, does he have any new? Because I think he does have some new music. Man, I don't know. I mean, I'm not checking for it, but I'm just saying. No, the last movie. thing I know he came out with was right when he got out of prison. That's the last shit I heard, and I didn't care for that. But um, I mean, and the thing is, it's funny because I think that he has potential as far as talent goes, because he has a good voice for hip hop. Yeah, his voice that. really hits music good. And that's why he sells. Because be he's one of those people he can say anything, but he's got a good attention grabbing voice. But he just he says clown shit all the time and. And then he does clown shit. So it's I've like, never listened to a whole six nine song. Yeah. Even before all that happened, like right. I had never actually listened to a whole six nine song. Yeah. Well, he had that one song. I like. I mean, I like it. I don't agree with it. But I mean, that one line he does like something like they got them guns go dum 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 dum. Oh. Like yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just you know what I'm saying. It's catchy. It's, it's catchy. Yeah, it's yeah. catchy. No, it ain't, you know, it ain't artistical genius. Right. I'm not saying that. That's what I'm saying about but, him. Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's what gets you because he has a voice that can really draw people in, but he just he just says anything. He can say anything and you'd be like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm going to cop that. The way the, the way the game designed now uh, with the industry, they don't sign rappers. They sign acts. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. yeah. If you're an entertainer, yeah. you're going to make more than a good rapper. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep, That's they can capitalize off of your ignorance and whatnot. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, you know, a lot of the young guys, man, you know, as long as you don't really just, like you said, stick to just talking about street shit all the time. Well, oh, I got guns and I got this and I got guns and I, okay, the next song, I got guns and I got this. It's like, okay, we need a little bit more. You know, that's cool. Oh, but, more guns? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Switch it up. Be, you know, tell us about some tragedy shit or something. You know what I mean? How you lost somebody or, or something. You know, give us something. So I like people with more variety. You know what I mean? yeah. That's my thing. Well, let me let me ask you this. So, um, I think we talked. I remember talking to C. Pitt about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, artist development. Yeah. Like, and I think what was this? 2019. I asked him. How how do you go about that process? Like you trying? Because I know it ain't like you know back in the day. Especially like in the nineties, you know, you know, what I'm saying you had like someone that like, you know, okay, don't be out here like this, or you know, we gotta, yeah, you know, they, they like we wait, you. like you know, what I'm saying they weren't really pushing, they were pushing the music, but they're like, nah, we gotta develop and make sure that he do this, so when he comes out, you know, he push out quality work. So I know the process is different now. So how how if you if there is a artist development thing that you went through or Anything like that. I'm trying to make uh, this the best. I know I'm not forming this. Like I, right. And all, now, how do you do that? And, right. and shout out to my management. Shout out to T Lynn. Um, before 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 uh, me and T linked together, uh, I had never had a manager. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like okay. everything y'all, everything you see from me was me. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, uh, yeah. straight out of pocket. My my artist development, in all honesty, came from me going to prison. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? The old me, the young me, man, look, music was the last thing I wanted to concentrate. I was into everything. You know right. what I mean? But when I went to prison, you know, I sat down, like I really grew up in prison. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So when I came out, my mindset was different. Like I was just more about business. You know what yeah. I mean? So everything I do, like my mindset is all numbers. That's all I think about is numbers. All yeah. Now let me let me ask you about that. Now you said, you know, you grew up in prison. You know, you kind of yeah. grew up in prison. Um, and I, I I think about Malcolm X because you know it's like you know if you're reading this biography like if you really want to get something together and stuff the best place to go is the prison because you know college and all that stuff you get well not now because of COVID but you got all this dumb shit going on but like in prison that's the time that you can really study and you know, you know why because ain't nothing. like out here you can you can be in the free world with no job no nothing. And still, you can't sit still to read a book. Right. You know what I agree mean? with that. You go to prison. When yeah, they close their door and they say it's lockdown, you, you going to read a book, you're going to go to sleep. Right. That's true. I went to school. <clears throat> you know, I just, I got tired of sitting around doing nothing or sitting in a pod playing chess all day and listening to the same stories. Guys talking about they're going to go home and sell dope again. They're going to, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Sooner or later, you start thinking like, 
how can I get rich in a different way and, and not come back in here? Man. Right, right. So what were the books you what were you reading? I went to I went I actually went to college in prison. Okay. You know what I'm um, I got indicted at twenty three, got locked up at twenty four, I did five years, I came home at twenty nine. Um, okay. Okay. I, I got indicted in a different state though, so I got indicted in Virginia. And uh, while I was in Virginia, I went. I got shipped to a compound that had a college program. And uh, this old head, I used to sit and play chess with. One day he asked me, he said, uh, he said, you love your family? I said, yeah, he said, no, you don't. I was like, what you mean? He said, cause if you loved them, you'd still be out there with them. Right, wow. And when he said it, like, you know, it brought me the wrong way, but he was right, you know what I mean? So. I just started going to the library. I just, you know, I started trying to do productive stuff myself. You know what I mean? So I ended up getting every trade that the uh, the prison offered at that prison. To every trade they offered, I took every class. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. And I think you, I think we all need somebody like that in our lives. You know, somebody who can kind of poke at you a little bit and, and remind you, you know, this ain't what you want. Instead of like you said, being in prison and saying, when I get out, I'm gonna do it again, and I'm, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make it right this time. But I'm, I'm gonna get get away with it. Nah, nigga, you. Do better, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Especially better. like the, you know, the old heads that get out, like they still think it's nineteen ninety. Like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, met, no. I, I, met couple, I met a couple old heads that had been locked up like 15, 20 years. Yeah, and were smart. When yeah. I say smart, like smarter than my high school teachers. You know what I'm saying? They, they really was on their shit. Yeah, man. they was like, man, I, I learned all this. So I was locked up. Yeah. You know, yeah, so. that's why I'm always I'm I'm an avid reader, man, and I yeah. I don't I know I'll probably read more if I was in prison, but you know that's why the, one of the first things I got you was a book because I'm like this is the shit I like to do, I yeah. like to be educated, man. I like you know to, if you, to, you want to be a strong person, you know what I'm saying? If you want if you really want to be somebody that opposes a real threat in the world, I don't mean threat like in a bad way. I mean a, yeah. like educate your brain. Yeah, don't go buy a gun. You know what right. I'm saying? Go educate your brain. It'll get you a lot further. You know absolutely, man. man. Absolutely, man. I really agree with that, man. So, but yeah, we really hope to um, maybe have you back, you know, so we can kind of do this again because it's been really fun, man, getting to know you. And, you know, like you said, we know a lot of other Greensboro artists, so maybe we can help some of y'all link up, man, and make some music, yeah, man, because so. uh, this will be dope, man. I mean, we met a lot of people, you know, during the time. We, we've done the podcast for, what, three years now? Yeah, three plus. Three. And uh, so we're trying to grow. So, you know, we'll share yours out. You know, share our page if you can. Um, you know, tell your friends about us if anybody just wants us to interview Tell a friend to tell a friend. Right. <laughs> if somebody you know that's, that's really got talent, we're happy to interview them. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. You know. But, um, but yeah, man, this has been fun, man. I mean, um, anything else you want to tell people more about, like your social medias and all of that before we... Uh, um, close around just all social medias from twitter facebook uh instagram germ hatcher uh yeah just just lock in with me man just uh check out my last tape i dropped january the 8th it's called lost souls on all platforms it's okay. a push play um i also got my other albums uh mr 336 mm-hmm. uh the price of fame and i got a lot out there man just just That's take a moment to check it out because what i'm talking about i really been through you know yeah, I can. Now that's one thing I can hear that, like the one track that the uh, T. Lewis sent me. I heard that, like in the, you know, like yeah, this dude got that. You know, because yeah, sometimes when you listen to music now, especially some of the younger artists, you just don't really feel yeah. like you know what I'm they, saying. They like you don't it. feel the yeah, like the oomph, like yeah. you know, like pop big. The reason why they so like up there with everybody is because they conveyed the message and the way they conveyed it, you could feel it, you know. So I was in the studio and I wasn't recording with the artist. I was I was in the, another booth, but like I was out in the lobby, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, like eating some chips, some and uh he was writing a verse to record, but he was Googling different mm-hmm. types of guns to talk about in the verse. Wow. Now, that right there means <laughs> you ain't never had no right. or shot them. So why are you talking why are you about Googling? Yeah, you, you just want to sound, sound cool. good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I came with a pea shooter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I come with that dark gun. Yeah. Like, I don't understand it now. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. That's, that's when you know, when you see shit like that, it's like, dude, I'm going to need you to do better, man. Yeah. If you want to last in this game, that ain't going to work. 
So yeah, man. But um, but yeah, man. Shout out to you, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The only other thing I was gonna um say was uh, in case I don't know, we got a new segment that we're gonna be working on. Um, where we're gonna try to really break down some bars on some of the hottest um diss songs in hip hop. So we're not sure what we're calling it yet, but it's gonna be like a bar for bar breakdown of some of the hardest disses ever in hip hop. You know, from the old school to the new school and. You know, we just like to talk about bars and shit like that. You know, we already got a segment called The Lyrical Breakdown where we break down just some of the dopest lyrics in general. But uh, look out for that. We're going to be bringing that to y'all soon. Uh, don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, smash yeah. all the buttons. All the we are on YouTube. We are on uh, Facebook. We are yeah. on Instagram. We are yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, we are on uh, a Spotify, yeah. Anchor. You know, and we also on your mama's house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we did. Yeah, we we did. heading over to your mama house right, right now. Right now. Right now. <laughs> but, um, I'm going to put on a plate. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, did you want to um, throw anything out there before we wrap it up? Uh, I think we, I think you did it, though, man. Yeah. Um, we, again, we do appreciate you, man. Um, we definitely want to have, you know, keep in touch with you. You know, do do some more and stuff. Um, definitely, man. I mean, and it was really good to really hear you talk about. Like I said, I wasn't trying to ask you all those questions as far as, but it was really good to hear hear you. You know, talk about that because you know more people need to hear that and to hear your story so they can you know yeah. go through. You know, they can get through what they're going through. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so yeah, man. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and close it out. This has been episode one fifty four. One fifty four. This has been part two, and uh, we will see y'all again next week. And uh, hopefully, in the future, we'll have Germ Hatcher on where he can uh, showcase some more of his music, and you know, we can uh, maybe get a freestyle or two. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That might be it right there next time. You know, but uh, but yeah, for Triad Hip Hop Podcast, this is your man Kurt Howard, and this is Germ Hatcher. All right, y'all. We're going to see y'all next time. Peace. Still riding through the city by myself, and I ain't worried about nothing but the police. Fuck yeah, fuck Real you niggas that. still keep the 40 on me. I ain't never, ever, ever got cold feet. Yeah. This is life. No matter what happens, no matter, gotta live it right. My dog locked down, and I had to send the cut. Cause ain't no phone time in the hole. I swear they drag you out of spite. Real shit. Yeah. Come on. And this is life. No matter what happens, no matter, gotta live it right yeah. My dog yeah. locked down, and I had to send the cut Cause ain't no phone time in the hole, I swear they drag you out of spite 100. Yeah.